Hey guys, it is Chris Sarda at Cast and Comics, and today I am going to talk about uh, Yodorovs Yodorovsky and Mobius's The Black Eagle. This is the um, first in the series of The Black Eagle, and Yodorovsky is a uh, a very famous writer. He's done more than just comics. Um, not. Uh, extremely famous uh, as far as what comics mean in the United States, and then Mobius, of course, is um, is a, a a very, very, very famous uh, classic sort of French graphic novelist, um, and uh, Mobius has been around too. Now, the Black Inkle is sort of, and the Yodo verse, as they call it, is um, sort of a, one of going to be one of my main pushes uh, to read a lot more. Western comics that aren't American. So normally you think Eastern comics or manga, uh, you know, maybe the, some of the stuff that comes out of South Korea, which I forget what they call it, and China and stuff. And then when you think Western comics, normally people, when they say that, they mean American comics, which generally means superheroes and whatnot, which are cool. Obviously, I review those here. But um, uh, speaking with Gore Padal very often and um, on my channel and his and Earl Grey, which is a, a great, great channel. Um, he's a teacher. I believe he's a teacher and uh, he's German. All his videos are in English though. And um, he talks about uh, a lot of great work. He has a great series called Panelology. In fact, he has, he just put out one um, as I'm recording this. So this will be a few days later uh, for Mike Mignola. So, He's very, he's very cool, and a, a lot of my recommendations come from uh, his stuff, and also speaking to um, to a few people when I was in Poland and stuff. So I think for the most part, at least the next year or two, it's there's going to be a real focus on Yodorovsky's work, um, especially uh, the Yodoverse. Uh, I've read, I just recently finished his uh, other book on the Borgias, which is the the crime slash Pope family of, geez, what was it, 1500s, 1400s, um, and that was pretty crazy. I planned to do a review on that, but it's been a while since I finished that, and I've forgotten. Um, and then on the art side, just because uh, I've, you, I spend a decent amount of time in Poland, I'm there every couple years at least, um, is uh, Roszynski, who's done Thorgal, and uh, I bought a few comics that were in Polish, so obviously those I'm you going know, to have a different kind of enjoyment for. Um, so I'll probably jump in that way, the, the Thorgal route, wherever that takes me, and the Yodoverse to start. Um, I should uh, make it a point that Yodorovsky is not um, European, even though a lot of the stuff I'm going to do is European. Uh, I'm talking about European comics in general. He's Chilean. I've heard people call him Argentinian, but he's not. Um, I probably, just because, um, I forget his first name, but uh, Jimenez died. I'm so used to all my friends being named him and as seeing that G is throwing me off. So I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That just recently died of COVID-19 is a very famous Argentinian artist um, that's done stuff in heavy metal. Him I'm a, I'm a bit more familiar with and he's done a lot of Western comics too. So I use all of that to sort of get in, um, to sort of start dipping my toe in. I mean, this universe is what interests me the most, uh, just reading about it and trying to find it. The problem is, is that the 48 page hardcovers a little bit expensive for something I'm going to read pretty quick. That's really just two comics. Uh, and then comiXology only has number one on it for un, in a, un, unlimited. So I pay for that. But then I found that, um, then I found that, uh, Hoopla has them all has the entire Yodaverse. The Meta Baron stuff is there. So if you have Hoopla or don't know about it, it is, um, an app that most of our libraries in the U S uh, subscribe to. And uh, Hoopla has a whole bunch of cool stuff, music too, but most of us don't need that. Uh, but especially in the comic world, um, my library also does Canopy too, so I can find a lot of old, cool, um, old uh, TV shows and stuff like that that are on it. Anyway, uh, if there is a more perfect, uh, a more perfect marriage uh, between writer at least for this first issue or this first book, but between writer and artist, for what the writer is trying to do and, and how the artist is portraying it, it is uh, this book, um, The Black Inkle, which is number one in the Yodoverse. Uh, I just think that uh, this is a huge hit as far as, um, as far as how great it looks. 
uh, the style of the art, which has a cartoony feel, but at the same time, well, we're going the other way. At the same time, you can't see that perfectly, but uh, has a, I would say, the European cartoony feel, like the comic strip feel. Uh, but, you know, most people are going to be familiar with Mobius. The the colors, I think, are bright here, and I think it fits the the science fiction universe that Jodorowsky is going for. And throughout the whole thing, all the characters, um, uh, the art, even the even the story has this real cinematic feel, but you always get this, you always have this sort of off-putting sense of, of what crazy machine's gonna happen next, or, or, or what are they gonna get into. The simple fact that it's not this perfect science fiction, or this high science fiction that needs to make this complete sense, um, is something that uh, really pulled me in, really made me more interested in what was happening because you'll have these, uh, you know, clone kings changing from this ugly body to this beautiful body, as you've seen, and then they go into a different city, a techno city, where they're harvesting, uh, where they're harvesting body parts and stuff, and uh, they're really happy to get uh, the higher class people. Um, and in this whole mix is a lower level detective who um, gets something called the Inkel, which I don't know that much about. It seems to be sentient. Uh, but uh, seems to give a lot of power to whoever has it in them. And there are certain people that know it and want it. And this is what the first book uh, of the Yodaverse in, you know, there's a whole bunch of them. They're all about 48 pages. So um, European comics generally, when they're not in like that magazine form, uh, they come in like a little bit more prestige format. And, uh, and that's how these, went, these were sold. So it, it was everything that I expected. It's definitely something I recommend. Uh, I hope uh, the the next chapters are as good uh, as this at least um, and I don't doubt they will be because we'll be uh, far deep into the far deeper into the plot um, and I'll, I'll I'll know more and probably get introduced to some more characters I think that's something um, I think that the Yodoverse to a, to a certain extent maybe not characters uh, but the weird sci-fi world um, is, is definitely something that influenced Brian K. Vaughn. Now he added a whole bunch of other stuff, a whole bunch of um, soap opera relationship stuff uh, and, uh, and introduced actual magic into his universe. But as far as just like, okay, you've accepted this universe, that this sci-fi based universe where um, any weird machine or creature could exist and, uh, and, then, you, and then you have this expectation that uh, even though they may not be these crazy, I mean, Mobius is super detailed and stuff, but they're Fiona, App, Fiona Apple, Fiona Staples and uh, Mobius both have this, uh, this sort of specific style that may not work everywhere. Fiona Apple, Fiona Staples especially, but works perfectly for this kind of strange science fiction that, that they both do. So I can't wait to continue reading. Um, the Blackie or the the Yodaverse. The next one is like the Luminous Inkle, I think. So I'm excited to do that. I'd rather have it in that larger form in my hand. But um, digital works. Like it's not the best, but it it works. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is at Canceling Comics on Instagram and Twitter. You guys have a wonderful day.